younger brother, Philip, uh, was in a horrible car accident and he spent four months in a coma and about a year and a half in the hospital. And after the hospital, uh, my mom and dad began, began this arduous journey of looking for the best places for rehab and then later long-term care for my brother. Like so many other families that nobody can care for your son the way you would like them to care for your son so the idea of us creating our own program kind of began to germinate in my mother's head i jumped at the chance uh, to do that it was a, it's an awesome project and a, another challenge so in 2000 we uh, incorporated the farm and uh, started laying the seeds for what we built. So many things have happened in the life of the farm that show God's hand in what we are doing. Uh, my dad has a favorite saying, he always says, you know, God has uh, us, the greatest purpose that God has for us is to care for others. So we feel that every day we are executing that, that we are just here to help others. <laughs> and I had met Marty at a um, provider forum where he did kind of an, an info about the, uh, about the farm. And I remember sitting there and looking up at the, the presentation you know, it felt like my job was like down here. Mm -hmm. Like I can't believe like you could actually have a job at a place like that because it just felt like the right fit. And just environmentally, it puts you out in nature. I'm most at home in nature, so obviously to come to a work environment like this in your office can be this bench, you know, in the middle of the woods. It's wonderful. Just the all your senses kind of come back when it you know comes to the things that you see and you smell and you feel when you're out here and that's one of the things that we share a lot of the members that's their greatest joy of being here I think the biggest challenge for programming is trying to blend those two and meet everybody's needs um, and keep everybody engaged Nobody likes staying in a hospital. Why? Well, they smell funny. <laughs> you know, they smell funny. The bed's not comfortable. The room's always cold. Why is everything linoleum and plastic? You know, that's, that's the medical model. And you don't have to do it that way. This is, this is how do we make it their home and have it feel to them like it's their home. You have to build it a certain way. Our philosophy on everything that we do, everything that we touch, every reason we do anything with or for our members, it has one ultimate goal in life, and that's quality of life. Why shouldn't they deserve to live in a beautiful house? And, you know, part and parcel of that whole thing is the philosophy that, you know, the house, um, I don't like to say it's a group home. Even though it is licensed as a group home, it's not a group home, it's their home, right? So there's no reason why their home shouldn't look like a home, feel like a home, and smell like a home. When I was four years old, I fell down a stair, well, not the staircase, and I fell at least one and a half stories from a apartment building, and I climbed through or over the railing and fell onto concrete. 
This shit's really fun. Did you find a good one? Oh. Uh, that one's a little soft. That might not work. The lady who is the owner or in charge of the group, she called my mom because I was talking, I was saying something. And I am so lucky that I proved them wrong. That's my goal is to prove people wrong. Yolanda, like I said, is my wife. We've been married for 19 years. Um, a little over a year ago, a year and a few months ago, she was diagnosed with a, a large brain tumor. Um, it was a benign tumor, but they, it was so far in its progression that there was no other alternative other than surgery. So she was diagnosed you know, on, on uh, a Friday and we did surgery actually the following Tuesday. Um, and unfortunately, there were complications in the surgery. The tumor, which we thought was just in one position, was a, a bit larger and attached to the brain stem and such. And when they went in and did the resection, um, they caused some brain damage. It's been a difficult grieving process, and then it's been difficult more so for me to get the kids to take the time to reestablish a new relationship with who their mother is now. Um, and, you know, I know all traumatic brain injuries are different and the results are different. And like I said, for us, we went from one person that we all knew to a person that has a lot of the memories of that one person, looks the same, but just no connection with the kids, no connection with me like we had. So it's cultivating new relationships for us The folks at Heinz Feet Farm, uh, they were a godsend. You know, they were definitely what our family needed to help us get through. On my way to a friend's house, trying to fill out a job app at the time, but that never happened. So I ended up hitting a tree with the wet ropes. It comes back in bits and pieces, but at least I'm remembering bits and pieces. You really don't understand. I was like one of the most popular guys in my high school, okay. high school system. So I missed that, yeah, but I got over it. It was the start of a long journey of, I think, uh, not knowing and feeling and understanding the progress someone makes with uh, traumatic brain injury, um, you have a lot of hope uh, at first. You're just thankful after prayers of not just us, but a lot of people that knew him to kind of just get him through that coma and start to to react to just the life again. It was just, uh, it was just a hard thing. I've met yeah. one person in the 13 years that we've been doing this now, one person that has stuck with his friend 
and it was through a support group that we belonged to, a brain injury support group um, outside of this. And um, I was shocked. I, I mean, I, I remember saying, I, I'm just stunned that you stayed with him. And he, he looked at me and he says, why wouldn't I? I'm his friend. He's always will be my friend. I sat my son down and told him, if you injure your heart, they can fix your heart. You injure a broken bone, they can fix that broken bone. You injure your brain. I never told anybody this. They can't fix your brain. first three months. For one month I was in a coma and after that they said I couldn't talk at first and I did talk. I don't remember not being able to talk. Tell somebody their head injured. The first thing you do is start talking to you really slow. I told somebody was talking, I said, listen, you can talk to me normal speed, I'll understand you. Oh, okay, and I can listen to words of more than one or two syllables. <laughs> I got blindsided, knocked twice in the back of the head and in the side of the temple, and then got knocked down on the ground unconscious. They started kicking me in the head about 30 times, and I started convulsing. And after I started having seizures, they were still kicking me in the head. It's turned me into more of a darker person, and it's made my outlook on life very negative. This place giving me structure and keeping my routine at least four days a week, it just kind of helps keeps me in the right mindset to stay positive and not fall back into all that darkness and all that violence that I grew up around. Especially coming here with these people and seeing how they've made it through their brain injuries and their journeys that they're on and their recoveries too, that's just, each person is an inspiration in themselves to me. And I've, I've not grown up around that kind of stuff and that kind of love and positivity. So it's, it's a good thing for me. It's a place where all those other things are going on around them. They're seeing a psychiatrist. They're getting physical therapy, maybe, or speech therapy still. So this is the place where kind of all of those come together and they apply it. So they apply, how can I socialize with someone? How can I share my story? 
How can I mentor to someone to be able to give back instead of always feeling like the victim? Stand up, put some pressure down on the saddle and just kind of stand up and see how they feel. It's one of the only modalities that I'm aware of that can really engage, you know, your physical, your emotional, psychological, um, social, everything. I mean, it, it just, it impacts everything uh, about a person. They can spend time with that animal without having to be able to speak. If, for instance, their speech hasn't returned after their accident, they can spend time with an animal and connect in a deeper level than, than they feel able to connect uh, socially to other, you know, peers. Some of the people that worked here of all just said, come on over, just 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 talk to them. And so one day I did and just felt the warmth of the place right away and enjoyed the company of so many of them. And um, so I've been coming back ever since and I'm enjoying it. If I can bring a little joy and and um, use whatever gifts I have to um, to help them and to just make their day a little brighter, it's worth it. I just want to commend the Foyle family for the incredible development out here and everything that you see and, and ju I'm just really fortunate that they allow the students to come here and that they allow us to work on the continuum of care. So we get to see all age groups, all, you know, all different types of TBIs in all different settings, it's wonderful. have to, however we can possible, help them let go of the anger and depression and the rage of having lost who they were and get them to love and accept themselves as who they are now. And when they can do that, then they can really move forward as people and become meaningful, intentional, happy, healthy uh, individuals.